I'm so excited to have one of my favorite interviewees here, Dr. Dennis Wall. How are you doing? Doing very well. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. I am very excited to get an update on your work with autism and Google. Um, so tell us okay. a little bit, for those who don't know, what you do and um, how your work has progressed since the last time we talked. All right. Uh, my lab's working really hard on trying to create mobile and wearable devices that can help streamline the detection and diagnosis of autism, as well as provide therapeutic intervention mechanisms that can be delivered at home to the families directly in a more naturalistic fashion. Today's waiting lists for an autism diagnosis can exceed 18 months, and access to therapy is equally long. And so, you know, you have families who are you know, aware of the risk, aware of their situation, but can't navigate through the complexity of the healthcare ecosystem in time frames where it really matters most for the kids. And so what we're trying to do is develop mobile mechanisms that really embrace the, you know, the future of precision healthcare, right? Where we're driving um, data collection further out of the clinic, ex-clinical data collection. I love that right? phrase, ex-clinical. I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I made it up. I don't really know. <laughs> All the best phrases are made up, so it'll become a thing now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Can you give us a little more of a specific example? How actually are you working to detect autism? Well, we, we use a, a series of machine learning classifiers that work on features extracted from home videos of children with, with, with risk for autism or risk for development to delay. Children as young as 18 months old, uh, somewhere between 18 and 36 months is the sweet spot where we're operating. Um, those, those videos typically capture play behaviors, creativity, imagination, features, how they play functionally with toys or not, their level of vocabulary if relevant, if they're, not, if they're post verbal, uh, when they should be developing vocabulary. Um, and all of that um, really happens within a two to three minute time frame, a very short video clip essentially that we, can ex that we can use to extract features that get run through a machine learning model instantaneously and provide a quantitative risk measure of that child's risk and likelihood of getting a diagnosis for autism. The point of that is to be able to put the power into the sort of the hands of the families and they get an actionable report they can bring to the general pediatrician during well baby checks. And at that point in time, we hope that the gen general ped or the developmental pediatrician will be able to react quickly to that information and make a better informed decision about whether to refer, referring with confidence, or um, make a diagnosis on the spot. So it, is, it helps kind of triage. Exactly, exactly. That's the notion, that's the, that's the mechanism that we're hoping to have operating in the healthcare system. You know, where the parents are really taking control of the delivery, of, of the capture of the information and the delivery of the information to the primary care setting. This is so exciting to someone who has pediatrics near and dear to my heart. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about how Google Glass fits into this? Right, so we don't want to just stop it. So by the way, a lot of that um, technology has been licensed to a company called Cognoa, and they're pr trying to push that forward in terms of being able to triage and perform more effective um, navigation through the healthcare system so families can be diagnosed quickly. But we don't want to just stop with diagnosis. We want to be able to go further and, and provide a a break through the bottleneck for therapy as well. And you know, there this is just another very similar problem where the number where the number of clinicians or clinical practitioners who provide therapeutic intervention are far outnumbered by the number of kids who actually need behavioral therapy. And that's the predominant form of therapy. That is the form of therapy mm -hmm. for autism today. This is where glass comes in. I mean essentially glass show is me, meant me is glass. meant yeah, to provide um, real-time dynamic feedback, social cues to the children who wear the glasses. The, the glasses themselves okay. uh, look out into the world and we get a view from the child's perspective, which is really amazing. And the children are just getting light feedback from the glasses, which comes in the form of a visual feed to the heads up display of the glass units, which might take the form of, of an emoticon or a, a word like happy, sad, surprise, confused. It's like, like virtual cliff notes for them? Exactly. So the outward facing camera is watching you, okay. tracking your face. Those, face, those facial expressions, your eyebrow raises right. and your, your, your tilt of your, of your uh, lips might get passed as action units to the phone. The phone actually operates as the processor. Wow. It's getting facial image data directly from the glass units and those are being processed automatically using a machine learning classification system that we built in my lab to provide emotional cues instantaneously through the glasses in the form of visual or audio, actually. We have the audio uh, capabilities. The other cool thing about this is that it's tethered to this app that we've developed and really it functions together. The data get passed to the phone, the phone captures and stores the information really as a perpetual medical record. Wow. Right? It's a longitudinal observation of the child in the child's social environments naturally at home. Um, and 
and that, sto that, that this is where big data comes in, right? So okay. we're getting all sorts of social interaction information that's stored on the phone, including you know, head tilt and accelerometer data that's coming from the glasses as well as from the phone. We're storing the social interaction data and we're recording the most expressive events that happen during any kind of interaction that mm -hmm. the child has with their family members. And those expressive events can then be reviewed later by the families and they can work together to say, okay, here's this moment when you know, I changed from happy to angry and you didn't notice. <laughs> We, we can train it to work on specifically mom, dad, grandma, other family members, anyone who comes into the natural environment of the child. And so it's meant to be a mechanism for tuning to the environment in which the child will constantly interact. So you've gone from ex-clinical diagnosis to ex-clinical therapy. And exactly. I cannot wait to see where you go next. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>